Well, hey folks, how y'all doing in the land of grills? Here we got the master built portable charcoal grill. This should really be called the portable gravity charcoal grill because it's got a lot of the same stuff in on the inside that that does. So uh, it, a lot of similarities there. I don't understand why they're not, but I already did the burn in because I wanted to figure this thing out before I brought you along. And uh, we're going to show you <laughs> some of the tricks to starting it. Uh, and we're going to show you how low is low and how hot is hot. So going to be a quick and easy one here, folks. Uh, uh, there's going to be a, the first cook is coming up real quick. In fact, I plan on doing two of these videos back to back. And the next video will actually show the actual first cook on this grill. So I'll tell you what, folks, going to be a good one. Uh, some very interesting things coming up. All right, so for our first cook, I am going to use uh, and, and try out the batteries. Hey, that's all your controller right there. And uh, you're saying, you know, this is supposed to be portable. Is that waterproof? And they do have a little gasket around there. So put this back on and fire it up. And like the, the bigger grills, you can get an adapter and run it off of one of these battery packs. These are these battery packs you can put in your car that jump start and also serve as USB and a flashlight. These things are pretty cool also. All right, let's talk about starting it. We already talked about batteries. Uh, people are gonna ask, according to the owner's manual, 16 hours, what they're saying the battery is gonna last, the four batteries are gonna last depending upon use. I've already got about five hours. And one thing I did notice is that even though the thermostat shuts off the uh, the fan at as it's coming up to temperature, when it gets low, it doesn't shut it off. So like if it sits for, I don't know, maybe there is a shut off after an hour if it gets to a low spot and then, then it shuts off the fan, but it didn't happen for me. So here, here's your charcoal grate. Now, they're saying you should be putting, you know, your starting cubes in there and then you got to put it down in here, but this don't fit. In fact, you got to go on an angle to get it in. So if you're putting something in there, it's just going to fall out. And uh, that's kind of a mystery to me as to why that is. I'm sure these ribs are to strengthen the, the charcoal basket. But what I found out is that if I just take one of my cubes and place it down in between like that and light it like that, that that'll work. In fact, that'll work just fine. In fact, if you're using this at home to light the charcoal first with a torch, that would probably work just fine too. If you're wondering what we're using... Hotter, longer, cleaner, b and find it at Ace Hardware, folks. All right, so I'm going to give this five minutes or so just to get her going real good. Like I said, if you're doing this at home and you don't want to use the starter, you could just use a torch to get a couple charcoals going, and then uh, you're good to go. All right, charcoal started. I said about five minutes, and then you turn the fan on. Just like this. You the fan running. You can see the smoke pouring out of there. So now let's talk about the fan. The fan is a one speed fan and it is hooked up to a thermostat. So they say to turn it all the way up and then when your lid temp hits what you want, say we're looking for 225, then you would wait till you hit 225 and then you would turn this down until the fan shuts off. We'll show you that. All right, folks, so our lid temp is coming up on roughly 200 degrees. So what I'm gonna show you here is you take your controller here and you just turn it until it turns off the fan. Turn in right there. So they're saying that that's two, 200. What I'm gonna do based on my last cook is I'm gonna take this a little bit more, like about there, and see how low we can get this thing to go. Once we determine that, and, we'll do, and I've got the pucks in there already, then we'll do a hot and fast test. At 30 minutes, you can see it even went down a little bit. So let's uh, see what our pucks are doing, okay? Well, I think that should answer your question whether we can do low and slow. We're uh, 175, 175, and 200. What I found this morning was that it was always warmer toward there. All right, so let's uh, let's turn it up and see if we can do 225. All right, another 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, it's not quite 225. It's 250-ish, uh, eh, maybe a little shy. Let's take a look at the pucks. So pucks 250. 250-ish, uh, that's 250-ish, that's 250, and then closer to the uh, heat source, almost 300. All right, so I think we I think we proved that we can do low and slow on here. We're gonna pull the pucks, uh, and we're gonna turn it up and see how hot, hot it is. All right, I got the grill turned all the way up. I actually looked at the charcoal before I did this and moved it around a little bit and uh, added a couple more pieces. And that was about 15 minutes ago. You can hear the fan just fired back up again. Well, we're just gonna let it see where it's gonna settle in at here, and then we'll show you how hot it's getting. Right now, it's only uh, the lid. 
Uh, all I've seen it get up to is about 500, but that's not at the grade. So we'll uh, let this settle in a little bit more. Give you a look, see how, how hot does this really get. All right, so lead temp seems to be settling in right around that 450. It keeps going on and off here, but it's, it goes up a little bit and then it just settles in at that 450. I've got it turned up all the way. So let's just take a look at our grates here and see what kind of temps we got so you can see it too. So far away, we're in the 500s. Should get hotter as we get closer. Got some 600s as we get closer to the charcoal. So definitely hotter than a pellet grill would get. But I, I was actually expecting to see like its big brother, you know, almost 700. So uh, I'll tell you, we'll give this a couple more minutes and just uh, do another verification to see if those temps are real. All right, 15 more minutes, and I think that's that's it uh, for temps. Let's get you in there so you can see that. Yeah. So it doesn't get as hot as I was hoping it would get. I was hoping for 700, but uh, it's a small grill. It's a portable, portable grill, and, uh, you know, 550 to 600 is not bad. All right, folks, when you're done... And you can see, and I, something like this, if you're done for the day, I would just let it cool overnight. Next time you use it and then, and then empty it out. But you can take this whole thing out and then we're just gonna dump that in our uh, ash. I got my ash tray, my ash, metal ash bin right there. Just like that. And then don't forget to, uh, And there you go, you're done. So one thing I did notice as I pulled out the ash bin is that a lot of the ash goes into the heat tube. So you'll have to clean that out every time also. All right, folks, so low and slow, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Hot and fast, it does get hot. I, I, like I said, not overly disappointed. I just thought something this small will get a lot hotter, but it, it doesn't. Uh, can you get four hours out of the chocolate harper? I, I don't believe you can. I think three hours is gonna be max. Uh, but you can always add charcoal during that. And you, you, what you do is you shut the fan off, open it up, and just put some more charcoal in. So, you know, you can go maybe three hours low and slow, and then you got to add some charcoal. It is a portable charcoal gravity grill, folks. So uh, I think it works pretty cool. The next thing to do is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's, well, let's get cooking, right? Thumbs up, folks. Leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.